You'd better wait here. Are you waiting? The others have not arrived. You will keep in the background. But the others must strike. Mallow Hall at two. Yes, sir. Dear Copper, Mallow Hall at two. Hey, Cabby. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mallow Hall at two. Yes, I've heard of a new death rate. What this is called? Baron Palenka and Erlini. I am sorry, we are so late. Dr. Marshall. It's quite all right, Baron. Gentlemen, the League of Nations has arranged this meeting for the purpose of demonstrating an invention which Sir James Blake assures us will end all wars. Sir James' retirement from Scotland Yard to assist in the perfection of this invention by his niece and Mr. Sheehan is characteristic of his efforts to promote peace among the peoples of the world. You turn the car around for our getaway to London. Right. To assist in this demonstration, the Admiralty has placed at Sir James' disposal an obsolete battleship.
There would be no live sacrifice. The uh, ship is radio controlled. This uh, radio controlled ship, under the eyes of His Majesty's airmen, is cruising between 150 and 200 miles off Land's End. Now, Mr. Sheehan has agreed to sight this ship in his visual finder and uh, destroy it. Why, it seems impossible. Incredible. Well, Jerry, this is where we take over. Will you explain the details as I work it? Right on. Gentlemen, if you will watch this visual glass, you may observe the operation. The instrument first sends out a magnetic beam directed by a series of elevators. Under certain conditions, this beam becomes visual. The magnetic beam stops the progress of the target, as you will observe. Then within 10 seconds, the explosion follows. Longitude 6 degrees west, latitude 50 30 north. It was a perfect hit. The ship is sinking fast. Correct. Put me through to Mallow Hall. Mallow Hall, Sir James speaking. You, Admiral. Excuse me, Doctor. Admiral Blandon speaking. My dear, I'm as anxious as you and Jerry that it will work perfectly. It still seems incredible. The observer reports that it was a perfect hit at 180 miles. The ship is sinking rapidly. This makes navies passe. Standing armies will be a thing of the past. Ammunition stocks will drop to nothing. I heard it all, Uncle Jimmy. Isn't it grand? <laughs> I say, I'll prove that's showing up. <laughs> May I share? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, indeed. Thank you. you make us the greatest nation in the world with this invention. My uncle financed the perfection of this invention only on the condition that it become the property of the League of Nations. And every country, great or small, shall feel safe to pursue its development unmolested. We must dispose of our ammunition stock before the news becomes known. The bottom will fall out of our market. That little machine will do away with our organization. Doubtless you appreciate the necessity for every precaution. I have warned that Sir James his life will pay if this news reaches the wrong quarters. <laughs> Gentlemen, I've taken means to that end. It was a magnificent demonstration. Thank you, Baron. Good afternoon, sir. No. No wars, no espionage. Uncle Jimmy? Yes? We're sure we can dish it out, eh? Dish it out? What does that mean in proper English? Well, Jerry says that's American slang for blasting them out of your way. <laughs> I should have to talk to Jerry. I'm afraid he's corrupting your English. Without Basso and the Scorpion will make a fortune out of ammunition stocks when we secure that invention. Yeah, but our job is to secure the invention. The Scorpion. Again, eh? <laughs> Count Basso. We mustn't forget those names, Bobby.
<laughs> you must secure that invention tonight. Yes, yes sir. You must secure Blake's invention at once. Come along. No, no. I feel quite sure that none of the family know that we built this stuff. your invasion. Sir James will not permit harm to come to the children. I have to stay in the background. Number second and third door.
James. We entertain no thoughts of defeat in this project. You will turn that invention over to us intact. Or... No, Uncle Jimmy! No! Don't, Uncle! You leave me no alternative. I advise you not to follow. Yes, Inspector Henderson. Count Basil Segaloff was in London only a few hours. He has returned to Paris. How to do about that, Dickens? Right. Segaloff flew to Paris this afternoon. Then the Scorpion won't be far behind him. And I take it that you will not be far behind the Scorpion. Right you are, Henderson. Mind if I join you? Mind, I'd appreciate it no end. Pick me up at the yard. Right. If I ask you to remain here, hope you revolt. Quite right. And you're going to find something for me to do. Right you are. You also, Jerry. Thanks. Perhaps I can be of some assistance. Well, that's splendid, Doctor. What am I going to do, Uncle Jimmy? Oh, wait. We'll be leaving shortly. We'd better go and dress. Right. Now, Bobby, I have a very important assignment for you. This is very, very important. I want you to stay here and keep a close watch on Charles. Charles? I've always suspected him. <laughs> those children. Plebeian. Hey, these Fraser Patches, they're one 
wonderful dancers. Oh, uh, boy. These Americans from the provinces certainly have a limited capacity. Practically none. Instructions, Sir James. Everything is as you requested. Thank you. Doctor, I wish you'd remain here. I don't want you involved in this. That's the way you feel, Jimmy. But I want to be helpful. Thank you, Doctor. I'd rather you'd remain. Henderson, give us about four minutes. Right, Jimmy. Come along, Mimi. You remain here, Doctor. Ezra! Ezra, what's wake the, up! What's the matter? What's the matter, huh? Wake what? Up. what do you make of that? I don't understand. You were in the room above, and I'll check on the roof.
you have happy landings, Mama. We ought to get up there. He may need it. Jimmy knows what he's about. A false move of ours might wreck his plan. Perhaps you're right. This waiting makes me goose pimply all over. His neck's not broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Why? 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 Right here, we've got to see what's happened to Jimmy. Follow me when I get up. Keep up the vibe. Now, wait a minute. You can't walk out of now when he moves like that. I'm the producer, Dr. Lee. Come back here. Now, listen to me like... Dr. Marshall, what's happened? What are you doing here? Oh, I... I was following Baron Palenka. He attacked me. Well, have you seen Count Bessel? No. Was he here? Well, I was following him when I found you. Come along. I'll get you out of here. Come on. Pardon, monsieur. It is not permissible this way. Oh, it's all right, Marco. Oh, it's all right. We're a perfectly respectable married couple, and this is our chaperone. Oh, so sorry. Henderson should be waiting for us in the cafe. So sorry. Jimmy, Dr. Marshall. Uncle oh, Jimmy. Oh, friends of yours? Well, I'll buy them a drink. Sit down, gentlemen. Undoubtedly, Count Basil Segalov. If Baron Polinka is in Paris, as Marshall says, he may be within reaching distance of the Scorpion. Marshall is very shrewd. His guess may be as good as yours, or mine. I'm going to have another look for Segalov. You wait here for me. When those youngsters get back, tell Jerry to take the boat to the hotel. Right. Now, here is the street, and this is the room occupied by Count Basil. We understand, Inspector. We're to get what information we can, and, and that's all. And no unnecessary risks. We'll be careful, Uncle Jimmy. I hope so. Don't worry about us, Jimmy. We'll be all right. Well, goodbye, and good luck. Thank you. Come along, Mrs. Sheehan. And now, for our part of the job, Inspector. Shall we try this one? All right.
your room. Quick now. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Uh, that's my son. John's a gentle lad, but he's not quite right in the head. What could I be doing for you? Oh, I, uh, my husband and I are looking for yeah, a... we're looking for a room. We saw your sign. Oh. Well, I have nothing vacant but a front room and the floor above. Well, that's what we're looking for, eh, darling? Oh, well, this way. Here. Here you are. Mm, I, I don't think I care for this. Oh, well, uh, we'll take it for a week anyway. Uh, let's see. Anything I can do for you? No, thank you. Just leave us alone. We'll get set. Right? Thanks, Jack. The room upstairs. I let it this morning. To whom? She and then the girl. I recognize them from the photographs. Are they alone? Yes. I thought it best to let them think we suspected nothing. You did well. I'll take care of this. You're all here. Scorpion just came in. Good. I have orders for all of you. Give me five minutes, boys. Right, Jimmy. Jackie, that ain't quite right in the head. Okay. Yeah, well, what are you doing? Shut what up. is this? No. Shut up. Come in, man. All's clear. Go to the room above. Jerry knows it. And get that dictaphone working. I'll take care of this end. Right. And where are you going up to? Come along, step lively.
Now look here. You remain quiet, and you won't get hurt. You understand? <sighs> See them? I can only see their shadows. Keep watching. I'm going below to check up on the old man. All right.
What's the matter with you? Come on, what are we waiting for? Let's rush him. No. They'll attack as soon as Peyton returns. And when they're all in the room, then we'll have the entire gang. like you'd done for the other one. And I can't say that I'm sorry. I'm going to have a look for Jimmy.
Looks like Daggett took it on the lamb. On the what? Uh, skip it, Skipper. He am straight. I don't agree with you. I believe he ran away. Let's adjourn to the hall. This uh, argument's wearing me out. Yes. Yes. Very good, Dickens. They picked up Sigalov's trail. He's in London again. Hmm. Sooner or later, he'll lead us to the hiding place of the scorpion. The finding of Baron Falinka's body in that Paris dive narrows our search down considerably. Come on now, me hearty, or I'll be working on you again. What have you got there, Briggs? I found him trying to get out of the underground passage with this. He got rough, so I had to maul him a bit, sir. Oh, yes, yes, of course. One of the queer gentry who raided us the other night. Very good, Briggs. We'll take care of him. Thank you, sir. I have a few questions to ask you, my friend. And the right answers may help you when you come to trial. Well, I ain't talking. Take your choice, my man. Whether you talk or not, I have evidence enough to lock you up for a long term. I've told you all I can. I don't know any names. We've all got numbers. Scorpion is number one. None of us have ever seen him without his mask. How are you called to a meeting? No woman in Limehouse. She's number seven and knows where to find us. I think I know the lady. Henderson, do you mind calling the yard? It might be worthwhile to check up on number seven. Count Fassel to join me at once in the usual place. I have secured what he is waiting for. But the, but the, but the police guard the river and the panic entrance. Are the police infallible? Tell him to come with the Fassel. He'll be safe.
Principals are impatient with the delay. You were already with the cash? I have already explained that I will give you unquestioned guarantees and signatures. Is that the instrument? signatures again, and I will demonstrate the rain. One exit we didn't have covered, Henderson. And we've lost him. But not for long. Let me show you something. The fate for our trap, Henderson.
Could I be of any help to you? Keep back. I'll shoot the first man to move. It seems we've come to the end of the trail. Dr. Marshall, the scorpion. You, goodness. Dr. Marshall, you've reached the end of the road. And gentlemen of the League of Nations, in behalf of my young friends and myself, I wish to acknowledge the honor that you have seen fit to bestow upon us, and to express the belief that in accepting the death ray, you have made a long stride toward the preservation of the peace of the world. Try to forget you're an inventor and a gun mall and just be a... A what, Jerry? Well, uh, let's call it a girlfriend. M. Scray, Uncle Jimmy. M. Scray. I beg your pardon. What does that mean in proper English? Square, Uncle Jimmy? Why, it's slang for scram. Scram. Yes, of course. Come here, young man. I want to talk to you. 